Hey everyone, it's Bob Crossan. I'm the editorial director for Wastewater Digest. I'm joined today by Larry Lee. He is product manager for Veolio Water Technologies, as, me as well as Meg Holloway. She is principal engineer of biological products for Veolio Water Technologies. And we're going to be talking about Veolio's new Sella biofilm technology. Thank you both for being here on the call with me today. Thank you. Thank you. So first things first, I want to talk about moving bed biofilm reactors. How do wastewater systems currently use those if they are using them? And what materials are used to facilitate the treatment in that type of an, uh, of an equipment choice? So NVRs, uh, i.e. Uh, moving bed bioreactors, they're widely used uh, in wastewater treatment, both municipal and industrial for BOD removal uh, nitrification and denitrification. Uh, the technology is a very simple, uh, compact, and effective. Uh, the material used for the technology is typically HDPE. Okay. So with Sela, this is a kind of a, a newer technology that you guys are talking about here. Um, what, what makes Sela different, different and how does that kind of change the equation of the of a biofilm technology or a biotechnology like this? Yeah, um, Sela is a new bio-based biofilm technology, meaning that instead of HDPE, uh, we use a renewable biomass byproduct. Um, as the biofilm support material. And that renewable support material um, makes the technology more sustainable from a carbon footprint standpoint and also uh, reduces our environmental impact. Cool. So well, what? why does it work so well? Why, why does this type of technology work so well? Um, that my understanding there's a, that there's pellets involved here and there's a difference between inside and outside. Could you talk a little bit about that, like about that interaction there? Yeah, I think uh, three things make the cellar technology work really well. Um, firstly, uh, it's the affinity between the supporting material and the biofilms. Uh, as we all know, uh, NBBR media carriers, uh, they are uh, hydrophobic. So when you put the media in the water, they typically take a while for biofilm to grow on them. Uh, with the cella, that's entirely different because uh, the biofilm support material actually comes from uh, the biomass polymer. So the affinity between the biofilm polymer and the biofilms to be developed on the surface uh, encourages easier and faster attachment and also it encourages a more diverse group of bacteria. So that's one of the things that makes Sela work well. Um, the second thing that makes Sela work well is the uh, surface area. So as we all know, we uh, uh, use surface area uh, for MBBRs. Like some media has uh, 500 square meter per cubic meter of surface area. Some other media has 800 uh, square meter per cubic meter. Uh, but for MBBR media, the, the effective surface area is enclosed by the media uh, carrier. So basically, uh, if you look at a media, um, there's openings where those openings actually limit the total surface area of that media. For Sela, it's a complete different story because Sela uses the outside surface of the support material for biofilms to develop. And as, as biofilm develop on the media, um, they expand. So the total surface area actually increase. So from that standpoint, it's unlimited surface area. Um, that unlimited surface area will enable the cell technology to have higher loading rate and a higher removal rate. A third thing that makes Sela work well is the process configuration. So the Sela uses a very innovative uh, process configuration by the name of a bio-denitro. Uh, it alternates um, two reactors in series. Uh, it, changes, it changes the uh, uh, environmental conditions of those reactors to achieve BOD removal, nitrification, denitrification, and also phosphorus removal. 
So I think those three things together make cello technology work really well. Yeah. So in addition to working well, there's some other benefits that um, you, you all have talked about as well. What are some of the things that people can can gain from using a technology like this? What are some of those benefits that they could they could leverage uh, if they were to use Sela? Well, one of the great things about Sela is its suitability um, over a wide range of applications. Um, <clears throat> the Sela technology leverages most of the best features of conventional MBVR. Um, at the same time, it has a lot of unique advantages over biofilm technologies and suspended growth technologies. Um, for example, the, as Larry's mentioned, the, the technology has a more dynamic biofilm mm. um, with the potential for substantially higher surface area than our typical MBVR media. Uh, the nature of the biofilm reduces the mass transfer limitation that is characteristic of conventional MBVR biofilms. Um, the performance so far has indicated that the effective specific surface area of cella material can be um, two to three times that of MBVR media. <clears throat> um, so this allows for much higher volumetric loading and removal rates, um, which translates into much smaller reactor volumes. Uh, another advantage is that the technology um, achieves biological nutrient removal um, in fewer process steps, which Larry also has mentioned. Um, and this, um, an example of that would be like a five-stage activated sludge process that is doing biological phosphorus removal and total nitrogen removal. Um, you need five stages to achieve that removal. Um, Sela can achieve similar results using our biodenitro technology um, in just two process stages by alternating the anoxic and aerobic uh, conditions within those two reactors. Um, and then finally, the Sela technology will be able to use uh, more efficient fine bubble diffusers and vertical entry mechanical mixers. Um, to help keep energy consumption low. Um, and then the excess sludge that's produced in the process also has a really high methane potential for those gas capture applications. Wow, so quite a number of benefits there. Um, and you, you did mention that there that there's some studies or some some numbers that you guys have been able to put together about the effectiveness on that. Well, what data could you share on that effectiveness so far? You touched on it a little bit with that last question, but is there more to more to come on that, or do you have more details on that that you could share? Uh, yes. So uh, we only conducted uh, multiple pilot studies. Um, we also have a full scale installation uh, right now in, in uh, Denmark. So. Uh, all those results um, indicate the performance is really great with the technology. Uh, for instance, the uh, full-scale project in Denmark, uh, it's targeting a TIN of four milligram per liter. Um, so all this data indicates like Sela is going to be uh, able to um, provide a better treatment and more efficient treatment. Uh, we can definitely share some of the data if uh, there's interest out there. Uh, we are also rolling out technology at WefTech. So uh, if anybody's interested, please feel free to stop by our booth. Uh, our booth uh, in um, WefTech will be uh, 2029, I believe. Sweet. Well, thank you so much for your time every to both of you and to everyone who's watching um, and about those that information that uh, Larry was talking about there. Check out our video description below. We'll have some links down there so you can get to that information rather easily. But once again, to both Larry and Meg, thank you so much for your time today to talk to me about Sella. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.